Well, this, this dog then he's, is good body language, right? That's right. Little wiggle, Captain too. Captain Jacinta right? of Evergreen Grove, owned by E.L. Johnson and Mary Silkworth in Jackson, Michigan. It's like a spry animal. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> With the ears, too, are sort of distinct. That's aren't? right, yes. Mm -hmm. Very dis distinct. Looking around, ears, what's going head. on here? And, uh, Pitch has a good eyesight to focus in on the small ones. So That's all right. The characteristics. Blink your eyes and they're gone. And now we have the English Toy Spaniel. You know, people looking in like must be wondering about different dogs. How good a house pet is this? And where would it be fit in an apartment, a home? Or how about the, the, the English Toy Spaniel? Fit in very well. Should have a very, uh, a, well, a, of course, a Spaniel-like temperament, yet they're very small and should make a very nice apartment dog. This is the Prince Charles variety of the English Toy Spaniel. So what, what is the Prince Charles variety? What is well, the, the tricolor. You see the three colors, the brown and the black on a white background brown around the eyes tan almost in the same spots that you see in all the typical black and tan dogs this is Clowcroft Earl Gray owned by Janie e. Henderson of Stockton New Jersey and now we see another variety of the King English Toy Spaniel this is the ruby. So we but have the English toy spaniel and the other English toy spaniel, and uh, the difference is very slight. Would you there say? is no difference in the standard except for the coat color. Is that it? That's, That's it. The coat color alone. The standard they, the dogs should be exactly the same, except for the coat color. But they prefer to have two different. Uh, they have breeds? two different. Varieties. Varieties, I should in, say. In each variety, there are two different coat colors. Gets complicated. Yes. This is Fathering Gay Ike Golightly, Go owned by Terrence Childs and Joseph R. Champagne. Look at those eyes, just like coals there, right? Yes. Listen. Woodbury, Woodbury, Connecticut. Hmm. Sort of a saucy <laughs> little <laughs> the tongue out there, but well-mannered as all these dogs yes, are. Very well. Has been a bark yeah. all night. Mm -hmm. the oh, greyhound. look at the Italian just Greyhound. Just looks like porcelain, doesn't it, Bob? Yeah, it just looks like sort of etched there as you yes. look at it. Similar to the Greyhound, of course, but it's more slender. It's a very old Greyhound, found in the Egyptian tomb 6,000 years ago, brought to Europe by the Phoenicians. You know, this dog is a, a little quiver there. Why, why, why is that little quiver there? This, the, these small dogs are very delicate, and the bones are very small, and they they tend to shake. Some of them do very much. Is that good or bad as far as the judge is concerned? They don't uh, they don't consider that really bad in this breed. Other breeds you would, you know, take a second look. Uh, not too bad in this breed. <laughs> look at Notice that. The way he puts the. Notice the gait, Bob. Yeah. That is like a hackney gait. That's what it is. It and reminds me of the horse. It's like a hackney horse. And this dog is naturally bred to have that hackney gait. It's a require, requirement of the standard. It, it's bred to have the hackney yes, gait? Yes, it certainly is. Isn't that something? And the uh, horses are trained, uh, I think. Yes, right? but they are also bred, too. For bred, they should be bred to have that gait. Well. Japanese chin. Champion eyewitness to Tosaho. That's an unusual face. Appeal. Yes, unusual. Certainly is, and it mm -hmm. reminds you of some of the other Eastern breeds. Dainty, profuse coat. Sort of a flat face. Yes. Uh huh. The smaller, the better in this breed. Probably native to Korea and developed in Japan and spread to Europe in 1700. It's just amazing as we look at the show, the, the different looks of the dogs and the different actions. And, and you can see why so many different people have so many different varieties and, and breeds of, of, of pets. Just just amazing. But each one has one, you know. Right. That's why they're here. And these are the best. 
the best we've had, uh, you know, they all oh, championship caliber. The greatest moment of popularity of this breed came in uh, 1853 when one was given to Queen Victoria. And uh, until 1977, Bob, these were known as the Japanese Spaniel. They've gone to the Japanese name of Chen. Now we have the Maltese. Ye ancient dog of Malta. Been with us for more than 28 centuries. And they're Spaniels, they're not Terriers. Now the, the work that goes into preparing the Maltese, and this must be up. I want to let you can see everybody's getting prepared here. My goodness. I like a little something like that before I come into the ring, you know? <laughs> you, look, you look at that Not one. Not that would help you understand. Nothing helps now. <laughs> Maltese is sprightly, compact, has a flat, silky coat. Does it pick up all the all dust on the, the carpet? Well, actually, it should go almost to the ground. I think this one goes to the ground, doesn't it? It's a jaunty little dog. You really can't tell what's happening under that kind of you, But this dog moves so well. Look at the, the movement. You, it's got to be there, you know, for, for it to move so well, being so small, for it to move as fast as it does. It just seems to locomote without any visible <laughs> right. means of doing so. Right. There's something in there. That motor is making it go. Air, that's an air cushion vehicle. See, it's <laughs> just it's moving on an air pocket. Yeah, it looks like a... That was look. champion Barnum Electric right. Dreams. Well, now we've shifted to a completely different look. This is the toy Manchester Terrier. And it is uh, one of a variety of Manchester Terriers. The other is the standard. Well, Bill Cosby looking on, he's saying, you know, we're getting close to that best in show. wonder how my dog's going to do against these winners when they come up, hmm? He's judging them now, and he's uh, hoping the judge doesn't put the best one. <laughs> but it'll happen. These uh, dogs have erect carriage of uncropped ears. And that's the only difference between them and the standard Manchester, except for size. The coloring of these dogs, you notice the thumb marks on the, um, on the legs there coming toward us. The, you have the, the tan, yes. and then you have a black thumb mark there. Yes, yes. It's hmm. a very distinctive character. It's got to be there. It's got to be there. And on the toes, the tan, is on the feet, and you have to have little pencil marks on each, uh, the top of each toe. And this all counts, huh? It all counts. Oh. Now, Mrs. Bloomberg has completed judging this side of the dome, and she's going down her line, reminding herself. Well, you know, she is very concerned about her responsibility also, as, as a good judge should be, and Mrs. Bloomberg commented on that earlier today. I see. What's going to go through my mind tonight is to find the very best door and make sure of that decision, which I will have to live with a long time. Mm, that was well spoken. Live with a long time because <laughs> after the judge makes the decision, that's when the phone calls, the letters, and the people say, hey, why did, is that right? And there's a phone call. You mean, I she, mean, she I mean somebody wins, and other people say, why didn't we? You know, it's a, it's a great responsibility, but there are repercussions, happy ones, of course, but then others, people who were just saying, hmm, I wonder why I didn't get it right. Well, she said that uh, if, if anybody called, she'd be down with Clark Williams in Spartanburg, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, some one of those Carolinas down there, and uh, they could call him and uh, ask for her. <laughs> well, there's now one winner, of course, <laughs> all the time, and others who don't make it, but you're getting the best judges and the best dogs. Now, uh, Bob, we're looking at the miniature pincher. She's judged the miniature pincher on the table, and now we have uh, two redheads, a uh, red-headed handler and a red-headed dog uh, going down the line. Now, did you notice the gait on that dog? It is also, like the Italian greyhound, a hackney-like gait, hackney-like action. The front legs, see? And you know, what, when, the, whole, when the, the dog just sort of jumps like that, is, is that considered... Uh, part of the personality oh yeah oh yes they they're baiting the dog and the the, the judge is just checking like now papillon butterfly oh you're a french speaker <laughs> you speak french uh, <laughs> a, a few names <laughs> oh yes and we also have uh, pauline pauline or whatever the french call it 
uh, droppier variety of this, this breed, but this is the butterfly-like ears, very distinctive. Not cobby, this dog is not. It's a little longer than it uh, is tall. Color must cover both the ears and over both eyes, Bob. It's a, a very distinctive color pattern, and it is required. These were widespread in Italy during the uh, Renaissance, later perfected by the French. I would say size-wise, this little dog is moving very well. Pound for pound, he's covering most more ground than some of the bigger dogs did. Known in the 16th century as a dwarf spaniel. I'm moving right along here. Yes. <laughs> so as you heard Eager. Mrs. Blumberg say, uh, she looked to live with the decision. Oh, we look at the front of the back of this dog. <laughs> we know well, which one, but, but it's unusual, isn't it? Well, we check where the eyes are. And then That's right. <laughs> They're out there. I know that. Here's where the eyes are. You come up to the handler, you see, and you say, show me the bite. And show me the teeth. And then, you know, when he goes up there, well, that's the front end, Bob. That's a good-looking dog. Not the front end and the back. Oh, isn't that nice? That is a good Just that good black ring head. around there and the, the that, eyes gleaming in the tongue. That, that is the typical. Uh, that, uh, all these dogs have a very typical head, and this is a good one on, on the... Uh, you see, many good toy judges do exactly what Mrs. Bloomberg, Bloomberg did then. She picks the dog up and looks at it right in the Well, we eye. get a good look at all sides, up, down, front, back, and up. Yes. The expression of this dog suggests its Chinese origin, and it resembles a lion. It's heavier in front than it is in uh, the rear. It has a slight roll as it moves along, yes, and it that's does, it? a moving, moving peak. They really can move. The origins are lost in the shadows of the 4,000-year uh, history. The centuries was the favor of the imperial family in Peking, brought in to Europe in 1860. And now we move on to our next distinguished dog. Now we have the first toy dog of the Spitz group, the Pomeranian, champion precious, petite. Precious Petite Gabriel, owned by Claudia Pfeffer of Jefferson, Louisiana. This dog has a fox-like expression. It can be any color, but you see most of them this color. Tom Palm has the same prehistoric origins as all the Spitz-type dogs, but was developed in the Prussian region of Pomerania. Shown first in America in 1892. Look at that movement, Bob. Now there's a moving animal. He doesn't make any difference about his size. He is asking for it. That's, That's right. That's about right. asking for it. Glint in the eyes. <laughs> Look at those legs moving in unison there. Hmm? Here, Very because you, nice. you get a good shot at the legs, because you know it, it's not quite that low, and they just uh, that's rapid fire. That's right. Here's one of the three varieties of the poodle. This is the one shown in the toy group, the toy poodle. Very distinct. Has dignity. Oh, it takes so much work to get the poodle. I, <laughs> very few people spend that much time on themselves, but <laughs> the result right. is That's certainly right. most attractive. This is champion Jodan's Winter Jasmine, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Daniel O'Gallis of uh, Sunnyvale, Texas. Hmm. Now, this one must be 10 inches or under. The, 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 the smaller dogs, are they a little more tense? You notice this, this little uh, quiver that many of them have. Is this something that it's goes along in bread and so they, uh, they shouldn't be, Bob. Some of them are at times, but uh, really they, they should be just little packages of dynamite. Does this uh, hurt them in the judge's eyes in any way? Yes. It does? Very definitely. Uh, you want to see a dog that can stand his ground and... Uh, 
I don't want anybody to take this wrong because it's a beautiful thing. But we're speaking about hunger. I was sort of thinking of shish kebab. <laughs> oh, but we get to those hot dogs. You're making me hungry. <laughs> but it is just beautiful. I mean, and the work and the, it goes into actually, it's, it's almost like a sculpture. It, you have to be very adept with the scissors. Oh, oh, you really do have to be adept. Now we come to the pug. Square and copy, multum in parvo. This condensation should be done, shown by a compactness of form, uh, well-knit proportions and hardness of developed muscle. Mm, just like a big, big tight body and like a tail, look at that. Yeah, tail. very distinctive curl in the tail. And those wrinkles, do they work to put the wrinkles in? Oh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> they this, just come with the body. Th there they come with it. <laughs> this mask on this dog is very distinctive. It has a trace down the back, black trace down this apricot body. There's, these are called mops in Sweden, M-O-P-S. But that was cute. From the Dutch word mopson, meaning grumble, to grumble. You, you become quite a linguist this year, Joe. You've been throwing in all these uh, <laughs> allusions to, to different words throughout the world. Uh, you've, you, been, uh, you've been throughout the world. You started talking French while ago. Oh, I was that it? <laughs> well, the only word I can say in French is what? Boulevard? <laughs> see the play and they see. <laughs> well, to speak English, you've got to try to speak some foreign languages. Now we have come to the Shih Tzu. This is a proud, arrogant dog, a ca arrogant carriage, at least. What do you mean, arrogant? You mean it sort of a yeah. holds its head high in any company? Snooty and aloof. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That Just thinks, thinks, it's, thinks it's the cutest thing on earth. And what do you think? Well, <laughs> you've got to show me. <laughs> well, maybe uh, maybe uh, the dog will. It may, it may show. Uh, Mrs. Bloomberg, she's certainly an authority on the breed. How are you in Chinese? No, uh, <laughs> because somebody said that one Shih Tzu meant lion in Chinese. Can you is that right? Lion? Yeah, I, I'm all the Chinese I know is one from column A, one from column B, one from <laughs> column C. That won't work here. I'm sorry. <laughs> that won't work. Uh, we'll check on lion for next year. This is Champion Wind Shoes Mona Lisa, owned by uh, Mr. Mac 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 Michael and uh, Ms. S. Crosby from Sun Valley, California. Mm, took a big sort of a jump. <laughs> <up>. Let's go. <laughs> the way the tail is groomed here, you uh, really uh, couldn't tell which one is the head, which one's the tail. Well, these are just great dogs. And, and, and you speak as a layman when you say that because uh, the people who actually know, of course, know every characteristic. This is the Silky Terrier. A moderately low set dog with a top knot, blue and tan. This is Champion Fall, I beg your pardon, Champion Fawn Hill, Lucknow, Sweet and Sour. See, that goes to what you were talking about before. Yeah, one from Column huh? <laughs> But this is not a Chinese dog. But it's owned by Bill and Stephanie Monteleone of New Orleans, Louisiana, who own the Monteleone Hotel, and you can get some awfully good food there, French. So the, the Silky Terrier. We're coming right down to the end of this group, and that means we're heading very rapidly toward the big moment of the night, the, the best in show. And incidentally, on the next dog that we have, as we told you, Roger Karras does a, such a fine job on the public address, so well known for his, his work with dogs and, and other animals, and I think you'll enjoy, he's been sort of in the background, listening to what he has to say, so on the next dog, we'll, we'll pick him up and sort of tune in. Let's listen. He's one of the most popular of all toys. Its ancestry is not well known, although it is suggested that the Sky Terrier figured in with the older version of the Manchester Terrier and a few other breeds, mostly extinct by now, tossed in along the way. The first Yorkies shown appeared in Leeds in 1861. They were first seen in this country in the early 1880s. At the time of those first importations, weights ran between 12 and 15 pounds, considerably more than today's dog of seven pounds or less. Stylish and charming, the Yorkshire Terrier appears to have a solid hold on its position of enormous popularity. This is Yorkshire Terrier number 2059. And the voice and the words of Roger Harris. Now the Yorkshire Terrier. 
on its appointed rounds. Being shown by an excellent, famous handler, Mr. Wendell Samet, and shown expertly, very, very well executed. Hey, have you noticed the, the name on, on the uh, Yorkshire Terrier? Champion top of the line stock option. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'd probably have to have a lot of options to buy this one too. <laughs> and this is the the last one in this this toy group. And the judge then is faced with the decision which of these toys will enter into the final judging for best in show. So Mrs. Bloomberg is now <coughs> faced with this decision. And Let's see how it all comes out. I'm not going to guess this group either. Oh, she's pulling them out now. She's mm -hmm. pulled out the Pekingese, the Pomeranian, the Toy Poodle. <clears throat> Make it a lot of hard to speak faster now, Bob. Long, lingering look. Yes, you Pulled can join them. Pulled out the them. Silky Terrier. <clears throat> now another long now look. She's looking at Mr. Simmons. Yes or no. Terrier. Yeah, go down and join him, Wendell. The answer is yes. You've got five out there now. Oh, heart's beat when you do this. Look, look, look. Will she pass by or stop? Who knows? This is the fate. Oh, she's just going by. Another look here. Oh. And on the there. way. Oh, disappointment. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Will she or won't she? No. Well, we'll see. And another look and a closer Looking. inspection. No. Nope. Seen enough. Now going uh -huh. on to the next. This is getting me nervous. R <laughs> Ruby can talk. Yes, to the Italian put greyhound. Put Italian greyhound out there. Japanese chin is taking a look at the that around. slight shivering of the, now the Italian greyhound didn't bother her. For the Maltese, yes, for the, the Maltese. the Maltese out there. And the uh, Manchester Terrier. Manchester, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, she's got out there now. That was she's in a very dramatic down. fashion, I say, Joe. Eight have been pulled out, 11 have been left at their markers. Now she's having a few words to say. What do you think she might she's be saying? Telling them how she wants to move, what, what kind of pattern she wants them to move in. Away they go. Away they go. Now she's moving them individually so she can see them in profile as they move. She's moved the Pekingese. Now she has asked the Pomeranian to move off. The guy with the red carnation. That was really a tough one. I mean, I, I can't. I, this is going to be tough. This is your group to judge, Bob. Now she's asked the toy poodle to move in profile so she can see the movement. I don't have a clue here. I mean, they, they all look good, as they have in all the groups. And now she's moved the silky. And now the Yorkshire Terrier. And now the Italian Greyhound. Seems to have quite a following, Bob. And now the Maltese. Even more of a following. Oh, the tension rises here as we await and this decision. And the toy Manchester Terrier is she moving. Now uh, those long looks are starting, and one could be the look that counts. Keep your eyes on this, Joe. I want you to call out this. I've already put down my winner, Bob, but I may be wrong. I... She moved the toy poodle up there behind the Pekingese, which probably indicates that that's the way she's going to do them.
Send them around. The Pekingese is leading. The Tory Poodle is second in line. The Pomeranian is third in line. And the Italian Greyhound is first. And she has made her placing in that order. So sing out the winners, if you will, Joe. Okay, the first place is the Pekingese. And the second place is the Toy Poodle, third place, the Pomeranian, fourth place, the Italian Greyhound. The congratulators have left. And there are our placings in the toy group. So the Pekingese has come forth as the toy group winner. Did that surprise you, Joe? Uh, no, it didn't surprise me, Bob. I, uh, I missed it by putting that down on my list, Toy Poodle, but uh, he came in second. Very close. He's an impressive looking dog. And well, what's next? Well, the Westminster Best in Show is next. The climax of the evening, right here in New York City at Madison Square Garden. Stay with us. If the only juice you had started out with mom and dad, then you're really missing out on what Citrus Hill's about. And your day gets glowing and your juices get flowing. Citrus Hill collects globe in your eyes. In your eyes. It's that tingle on the lips. It's that dazzle in the sips. Citrus Hill collects. It's your juices flowing. When we're picky how we choose them and we're picky how we use them. Cause we squeeze our OJ straight from the heart. From the heart. It's the taste so fresh and sweet. You feel it right down to your feet. Citrus Hill collects. When your throat's really sore, chloroseptic spray relieves it really fast. How fast? So fast that the moment he feels relief, we'll stop this commercial. Hello, I'm Dick Van Dyke. If you're 45 to 74, I have a very serious question to ask you. Have you ever thought about the kind of suffering your spouse and loved ones may have to go through after your death? Well, there's not much you can do to prepare them for the sorrow that would follow. But there is something you can do to help prevent the financial crisis that may result. It's called Security Life, a remarkable new plan that provides solid insurance protection to your family when they need it the most. For example, a 45-year-old man can get $40,000 of initial protection for just 65 cents a day. This is a life insurance plan you simply cannot be turned down for, no matter what your present health is like. So why don't you call now for this free information kit? It tells all about this plan. And when you do, you'll find out why I'm recommending Security Life and why I bought it for myself. To get your free information kit, call 1-800-255-5200. And the Scotty won that year, as you saw. Well, we've got the winner here with that toy group. And it's the Pekingese last one, by the way, in 1982. The Pekingese is being photographed, primped. This is uh, Bloomberg is holding the ribbon. And one of the club officers, I think it's Mr. Lindsay, holding the trophy there. Our first place winner in the toy group, champion by records, Carl Gable a Pekingese. And let's take a look second. at how the others came out. Right. Second was Champion Joe Dan's winner, Jasmine, a toy poodle. Third, Champion Precious Petite's Gabriel, a Pomeranian. Fourth, Champion West Wind's Sweet and Sassy, an Italian Greyhound. There's our toy group. Yeah. So, next, next, the final act. The climax, the drama. Stay with us, the best.